and uh, welcome to another devlog. It's been ages. Um, Christmas has passed and we're well into 2019. And I haven't done any work at all on my game project since uh, the last devlog. Um, for reasons which I can't talk about here. But um, the good news is I went back to Excuses, which was... Which is the game that I started work on about a year ago, I guess. Probably February or March uh, last year. And... Um, I've mentioned this before in devlogs, but I don't remember when. I'll recap a bit that I got um, I got really stuck by a couple of bugs. I had a have a interactive music system uh, which just wasn't synchronizing my loops and was failing all the time. And then I had another bug with my my parser thing, which did the formatting on the text and. Um, the combination of these two together kind of floored me and I spent a while trying to fix it and then threw up my hands and said, oh, I'll leave this to another day and uh, switch tacks. The, the, like, the development of this game has been kind of bitty because all through last year I was doing game jams and, and other stuff. And um, so it hasn't been in continuous development or anything like at all for, for the last year. Um, so anyway, uh, after like finishing up one of the things that I had to do, uh, and thinking about going back to the, the game, the game which still doesn't have a title, so, um, I don't know how to refer to it yet. Um, I thought I, you know, I should go back to excuses and yeah, you know, I opened it up and, uh, looked at the code and um, realise that, you know, since I've written this, I've written two or maybe even three other, <coughs> excuse me, a um, couple of other text parsers. It's not really a text parser. It parses strings to put formatting into text and it deals with uh, the typing out onto the screen of the the text of a, story. I've written like two or three other ones of these and uh, I just know how to do it better now than when I wrote this one uh, and so I stripped not all of it out but most of it out, studied again, rewrote it and not more logically. It, yeah. There are problems with rewriting it because the stuff it's passing is outputted from ink which is where I've written the story and ink, uh, I've done some weird stuff with my ink, which it's not really practical to go back and change at this point. So the parser has to do some weird stuff with like special characters and things. But anyway, uh, rewrote it and it worked and it wasn't hard. And then I went back to the music stuff and realized two things. One was that um, I'm peeking a bit. It's, um, I realized two things that um, number one was my code wasn't so bad as all of that. Actually, the music that I was using was not that great. And half of the problem or a third of the problem was that I just didn't have very good loops. And then the second thing I realized was that I was doing just some really weird maths because um, uh, I don't know how deep to go into this, especially as I don't really super understand it. But like, you know, if you want to synchronize uh, bits of music, um, you need to be measuring the amount of time that they they take to play. And you have to be quite precise about that. In um, the game, normally you're measuring times in terms of like the number of milliseconds it takes to play one frame of animation, that kind of stuff. But when you're dealing with audio, you're um, dealing with time based in audio samples, the number of samples that the audio device is outputting. And um, so you kind of have to do some conversion between samples and seconds. And I realized that like 
50% of my code was just this bizarre math that I didn't really understand converting from one to the other and really I should just remove all of this and not convert stuff and and I rewrote it and it worked much better the music still sounded not great so I went and rewrote another set of music for it I, I started completely from scratch with the music and so those well, the, 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 the bug fixing took like a day and then rewriting the music took another day and a half or so and um, two days and uh, the game just felt back on track it felt nearly finished so um, that's really cool um, I'm going to show you a little bit, bit of it now visually it hasn't changed a whole lot since the last time I showed this whenever that was um, I've started uh, a polishing phase now so I've gone in sort of cleaned up some bits of UI and things there is still work to be done on some more audio code and um, general polish smoothing some animations etc etc so there's still stuff to be done but it feels a lot more almost finished now really that's kind of dangerous to say in that but um that's how i feel so this is the game it's called excuses galore i've turned the music off at the moment but i guess i can put it down low in the background if i watch the levels uh, yeah hopefully that sounds all right to me i hope it is um so this is the game. Uh, this section of it, the character creator is uh, like as um, as it was before. Um, you know, you've got your random portraits. You can go back through them. You can change all your stuff. Uh, let's find one we like. I like that. And the random name generator. Again, they're kind of weird and random and that stuff. I'm I'm pretty sure that all of this I've shown you before. Um, and start the game. Excuses go not. Um, yeah, and like I say, not much has really changed. This is this is visually, I guess, as as it looked the last time was uh, the last time I showed it. Um, it's Friday night, so you're taking it easy on a bench in the garden. You're finding things out. Uh, I'm gonna turn the sound effects off just because I haven't um, I haven't yet balanced the the music with the sound effects and it sounds bad at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, maybe we we'll turn the music up a bit. Uh, it's Friday night. You're taking it easy on a belch in the garden. You're finding things out. Pick it up. It's your good friend Vero. There's a little stutter here. I need to check what's causing that. Uh, it's your good friend Vera, she says. There's a get-together for model railway enthusiasts. Want to come? Um... Oh, it's out of the question. Uh, unbelievably, I haven't done the laundry in a month, and there's not a thing left I'd be see dead in. That's all right, says Vera. See you later. See you later. Time passes. Time passes. Not much happens. It's late Saturday afternoon. You're curled up. Surfing the blogosphere. Your chat app chimes. Read the message. It's your special friend Brett. They say we're off down the skating rink. Up for it. So let me. So um, it's the it's the same as before, really. Um, but after going and fixing those couple of bugs and rewriting the music, took another look at the text. They started to polish it up a bit and decided to fix two things that I had. They had been niggling me before, and I thought that um, I thought that um, back when this game was my primary focus, I thought that these were not necessarily worth the uh, effort to fix. But um, I went in and I added in the possibility for your friends to use uh, third person pronouns. So as you see, this is your friend Brett. They identify as non-binary. Right at the beginning, when I started writing this game, I wanted to include the possibility for people to be non-binary in it. 
and um, back then when I was writing it, it, I was pretty new to ink. This is, I guess, the first like big thing I did in ink. Maybe even it's the first thing I did in ink. I'm not sure. And uh, I just couldn't work out the coding for the coding for doing that, like because he and she and flipping between those two is is easy because nothing else changes. You just have to choose one pronoun or the other. But as soon as you allow they in there, you've got to be able to change the form of the verb as well. And I didn't want to like write every single verb that uh, in the whole thing with the possibility of being different forms. So I gave up. Uh, I thought the next project will be more inclusive, but this one, not so much. Uh, anyway, now, a year later, I've done a bunch of other projects in Ink and I'm more familiar with it. And I was thinking, well, maybe I could go and add, add these back in there. I mean, they were never in there. Add eight days in. And uh, as I was thinking about it, I was like, hang on, there, there's almost no actual verbs in the whole piece that this applies to. I think there are four. There are four instances in the whole long text where there needs to be two versions of the verb depending on the, the pronoun that your friend uses. I was like, oh, this is not a hard problem at all. I should just have done this at the beginning. Um, I just, before I had written everything, I imagined that there would be many, many references to your friend and it would be crazy difficult. And it, it wasn't. So I went and stuck that in and uh, I'm happy with that. Essentially what it does is uh, when, where at the beginning of every day, it generates a new friend for you. It picks a, picks a random name for them. It generates a picture to go with that name and it stores them together so that if that friend ever comes back, which they can do, not very often, but they can do, then it'll use the same picture. And it picks a pronoun that goes with the name. And I've got a big bunch of names in there, about a hundred and... 60, 180, something like that, names. And before there were like, these are female names and these are male names. And I've just created a third group and it selects between the three. Uh, male and female are more common than non-binary, but easy. That's the one thing I did. And the second thing I did was um, in every, every day, um, you get uh, a randomly generated thing that you're doing. Here you are surfing the blogosphere. Then you get a randomly generated activity that your friends invite you on. Here, it's going to the skating rink. And then you have to select an excuse from a whole big random set of excuses. And um, the way that works internally is that this choice that you get right now, these, these three, I'm pointing at the screen. These um, three choices, are buckets which contain a uh, big amount of possible excuses. There are, I think, 12 buckets, and every day it selects three. And then inside every bucket, there are seven excuses, but each excuse has multiple ways that it could, could play out. I'm gonna choose this one, and that selects a bucket, and then I've got three excuses here. And if I click on my pet one, it'll have be something about a pet, but there are, I don't know how many. With all of the permutations of um, different variables in there, there could be 500. There probably aren't 500. Um, so, you know, the emu, the different type of pet is random. The problem with the pet is random. And then the actual activity that I do to help them is random and the way that I refer to them is random. All of those things together kind of come to make up an excuse. The excuses are really complicated when, when you see them written down. So 12 buckets, seven excuses per bucket, many, many possibilities per excuse. And the way that I wrote it at first, which I thought was super clever when I wrote this at the beginning, was that the, the beginning of the game you can only see the, the top of the bucket. And as uh, you progress through it, more layers become available. Um, what that means is practically that the seventh excuse at the bottom of the bucket 
nobody will ever see because you would have to play through the game and like pick the same option six times then a seventh time and get this last thing and practically actually i don't super want that to happen because if you get to that point um you're only going to see one choice available so in fact that that didn't happen i limit it to four is the maximum number of times you can pick the same thing so you know nobody is ever going to see that seventh one i mean it, it's possible but very unlikely and as i was playing through it multiple times testing it i realized that um it's just too samey if you even though there's a lot of stuff in here and every time will be different if you played it more than once you would get the same list of three and even if you play it once you see this list of three and you choose one of them off it the next time you see it you see the same two that you've already seen and a third new one which is just not satisfying because you reject it i mean it's fairly arbitrary right um that you're not uh using a lot of thought or uh, role playing or anything to decide which one of these uh things to pick um but you are gonna pick one and you know maybe you're super into tattoos or you like the weather i don't know but there'll, there'll be a reason to pick one or not and the fact is that when it comes back to the second time the other two you already rejected once so like the third one seems more cool than the other two and the way i found that i was playing it just going through is i'm just always picking the option that i haven't seen before and that's bad <laughs> It's bad because the game feels more repetitive than it is, that a whole bunch of work went into those fifth and sixth and seventh excuses in every bucket, which few people will see. And you kind of, it doesn't, it feels like less of a choice because you've already seen them. So I went back and rewrote that whole system for how it picks things out of buckets to honestly a simpler system, although not a system that's actually necessarily easy to write in ink i don't think i found it a little tricky now it just um picks three of the seven to show you three randomly and when you pick one it's crossed off it'll never appear again the next time it'll pick three out of the remaining ones and once there are only three left or maybe only two left in the bucket i don't remember exactly it it, it won't allow you to access that bucket anymore uh, and it's better it's better like that um the the problem with doing that in ink is like um ink is really fiddly with how it works with like arrays and things and even up until recent versions of ink i think there wasn't any way to re reference a item in an array by index. Maybe I'm remembering that wrong. Um, but there's a couple of features that have come in the later versions of Ink that helped with that, like a way to pick a random thing out of an array much more easily. And uh, anyway, so that's something that I did yesterday. And... Uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. I think it's cool. I mean, it makes me laugh every time I play it, which is good. And, um, yeah, there's still stuff to smooth out. There's bugs to make. The music I'm, like, happy with, but it ain't perfect. There's, like, uh, occasionally it'll hit a combination of sounds which don't work. And I'm, I'm trying to decide how I want to deal with that. There might be some sounds which are just removed from the game or uh, I might explicitly disallow certain combinations. I haven't, haven't pinned that down yet. This settings menu needs a bit of uh, love and attention. Um, and the end game is there, but not 100%. I've, I've played through it like probably 20 times in the last week. And um, 
sometimes the ending feels good and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not certain what to do about that. Uh, it's not, I think, a massive, massive problem, but um, to be fixed. So yeah, I'm really hopeful that uh, this is gonna be the next thing that I finish and um, with any luck, that's gonna happen soon. So yeah, I'm gonna play through one more day and uh, then, uh, then I'll say goodbye. It's Monday nights. You're lounging around, surfing alt.manufacturing. Your instant messaging app notifies you of a message. It's your old friend Frey. He says, Hildegard of Bingen is signing at the bookstore. Are you in? Um, I'm going to have to pass. Uh, I had a little accident when I was visiting the top secret high tech research facility on the outskirts of town. I'm not 100% clear what happened, but there was this gigantic resonating ionic pulse laser which got bumped by a rogue service droid. Anyway, something or other happened with the primary surge buffer and a highly virulent super virus got released. And that's when I blacked out. So I'm not sure what happened next, but when I came to, I was black and blue all over and I'm still a bit the worse for wear. So I'll take it easy for the time being. That's a shame, said Frey. See you anon. See you anon. Tiddly everybody.